want to to just piggybacking on everyone who has spoken thus far, I wanted to try and give you a sense of how you should think about applying, what you should think about the grants doing for you, not getting the grant, but applying for it. The first thing is that you're planning where you're going to be. And you're planning it sort of success or failure. It, in, it involves a little bit of a bluff. Often enough, you have to describe what you're going to do with the time that you have. And for all practical purposes, you have no clue. Um, if you have absolutely no clue, then this is perfectly good time to sit and think about what time you might need, even if it doesn't work out exactly. I mean, nothing ever works out exactly on the timing that you'll have. But it'll give you a chance to think of what it is that you'd like to do the next year and under with, with how much time. Where would you like to go or what library you would like to visit is just as important. It gives you a sense of what it is that matters in your project and how it could perhaps work out whether the grant goes through or not. The second thing that matters is that there's a definitive quality of marketing in, the, in an application. Um, the I am awesome quality. The I am awesome quality is one that every application will have, but the, the part of it that somehow matters is how you're going to manage to convince people that what you do is important. Regardless of the quality of your project, Absolutely regardless of the quality of your project, you're going to have to convince committee after committee after committee for your whole life of what it is that you're doing and of its value. There's nothing wrong about having to do that. And it's somehow, what I'm trying to suggest is that it's wrong to imagine it as in, here's the quality of what I'm working on, and there's some marketing that I have to do to present myself. Instead, you have to imagine that you're speaking to a number of people. You're going to be doing that with every single paper that you write. Those people need to be convinced. This is just a kind of paper, accepted results, potentially, and money. So imagining that this is about marketing rather than about the quality of the project, in a way, is a, a way of trying to fuse the two, a way of trying to imagine where you're going to go with this kind of, uh, with this kind of presentation. You need to imagine what a committee looks like. A committee uh, is made up of people who several months earlier agreed to be on that committee, not anticipating, of course, that they were going to have a giant pile of files the night before they actually sit through this. And it's 11.30 at night, and they're reading yet another bad application, or what they deem an, a bad application, which could be brilliant, but it doesn't speak to them. So that is the kind of group. None of these projects are bad. I'm, I keep repeating this. That is the kind of group that you're measuring yourself against. You have to be able to speak to somebody who is tired, who has other priorities, who has to be able to walk into a room and argue for you. You have to, as you sit there, transform this room into this kind of situation. Let's say that the five of us are sitting and discussing an application or discussing applications. Some are going to be more satisfied with the application than others. It's going to speak more to some than others. You're not expected to satisfy every person in a room. That's not somehow the goal. But your goal should be to make it clear what it is that you're trying to do, how you're going to try and do it, and how you can use the space allotted for you to present yourselves. And what may very well, in some cases, be a life's project. It's your life's project, perhaps, for the next year. It could be you know, what you're going to do for three weeks in the summer, but it could be what you're doing over the next year, three years, and so on and so forth. How do you use the six, ten, three pages to explain what it is that you're aiming for? Now, some of these are going to be within your discipline. Potentially, that might be easier. That could also be more competitive in different terms. A lot of the time, the big grants are going to be grants across the humanities. And what matters about that is to recognize that you're going to speak to people who are as you are and as you plan to be later, highly educated, but not necessarily interested in what you're doing. It doesn't mean that you need to satisfy them. It means that you need to suggest to them that you are fully competent and able to explain, not necessarily to your parents at the beginning of a dissertation, what this dissertation will be about. I always have the problem that I can never explain to my parents what exactly it is that I'm doing. I don't think I'm the only one in this room who has this difficulty. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but there is a way in which you have to be able to suggest, here's how it's going to matter. And everything that Ara said goes directly into that uh, set of issues. What kind of theme 
you're going to be able to work with, how you're going to present the first page. If it's a 15-page description, the first page is your best guess at moving ahead in this description. Not to grab somebody, but to pull them in sufficiently. You need to remember that there need to be enough different parts in what follows. Um, there are different schools as to this. I'm a very big fan of writing chapter descriptions so that you can be operating in different stages or in different ways across the 10 pages of what you're presenting. There are different schools, though, that is to be marked. And I'm not telling those of you who have written applications that you really should have written them this way. Uh, for me, it works that way. I, can, I feel like I can describe what it is that I'm doing by a kind of breakdown. Um, the, the, the fellowship that I'm on right now, last year with my collaborator, we prepared that chapter division. By now, we have changed it. But we planned how this project would go. And what changes have taken place are things that we are grappling, trying to figure out where these exact chapters are going to go. That's what the committee is also looking at. They don't know if you're going to write exactly the 10 chapters that you say. Even if your advisors, I don't know, I can't imagine somebody would write a recommendation letter that would say it is brilliantly broken down into six chapters. But <laughs> you get the idea of what I'm getting at. It's the priorities, it's the things that you have to have in mind. And these are all matters of what I called in the beginning, for lack of a better term, of marketing. In some ways, I think this goes very well with what Kara just described. You don't really know what a project is about. And the application writing is part of this. Grant writing is about learning what your project is about. After two chapters, you'll still have this problem that there are other issues that take priority. Some issues take priority over other ones. That kind of work is work that the application does for you. And this is something that shows very well, I think, in the process of, of preparation. So imagine the narrative strategies necessary to convince people, some of whom may be tired, maybe all of them, maybe none of them, um, people who have to uh, discuss with each other and have to rank applications. They don't need to know every technical detail. You're all, you're all doing it. I do it every single time. There are technical details nobody exactly needs to know. You need to have details, but that doesn't need to be an explanation of how you're going to exactly read the next to last paragraph of a particular text that you are studying. That is not going to translate, it eats up space. That's the kind of um, position or difficulty that you find yourself. So this is about imagining a kind of year long, let's say, no, I mean, I meant in the application process. Imagine that September through November, if that's the, the period that you have, is a time in which you are setting up gambits and bluffs that you intend to, to, to work with. So they need to be as good as you can make them for yourselves. Because one way or another, you're probably going to be working on exactly this stuff at the time that you say you're going to be working on it. And imagine what it means for somebody to sit and read this in the process that, you know, who is not exactly interested in what it is that you do and who needs you to show them just a little bit maybe why it is that what you're doing is cogent, well-organized, well-prepared. And then you're in a position where um, you might get it, you might not. This is, this is the game. Every, I will happily echo that, you know, with everything that comes, you can have a stack of no's. Actually, in some cases, you might even have very negative reviews of what it is that you wrote for when you've won every other one. It's possible. It's never happened to me. I know people that this has happened to, who got a couple of, uh, who did three applications, got two of them, and the third one came back with reviews that were devastating, that said this is the stupidest project you could possibly imagine. So, you know, not in as many words, but you see what I'm getting at. That is going to be, that in some ways it's about satisfying a certain group, satisfying a certain committee that's going to be looking at this. And it's something that you do to the best of your abilities. Then once it's finished, you can take a look back and see what it is that worked, what it is that you feel that didn't work for you and in the process. You need to be able to have other people outside, whether in the discipline, out of the discipline, non-academic, who can tell you whether this makes sense, whether this is something that someone not entirely committed to your, you know, every turn of your project is going to be able to, to work with. Mm -hmm.